didn't have to do it. The songwriter said that he allowed us to come together one more time. Good morning, Galilee. Welcome to another worship service here at the Galilee Missionary Baptist Church as we today we worship the first Sunday in the month of October. One more time. Sister Betty Shelley, the mother of Deacon Cottrell, on October 5th 
at 11 a.m. at Valhalla Cemetery, which will be a graveside service. The body is located at Arrington Funeral Home. Viewing will be tomorrow, Monday, October 4th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Amen? Amen. And today, we also want to say happy birthday to all of the October babies. And also on today, we want to go back to Calvary, the place where Jesus shed his blood for you and for me. Our scripture today will come from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26, where Paul pens these words. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup which he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Saints, on this morning, we go back to the place where Jesus shed his blood for you and he shed his blood for me. And the songwriter says, and the blood shall never lose its power. The blood that flows from Emmanuel's family shall never it's power. And even today, more than 2,000 years later, we can still stand and shout from the mountain top. And the blood shall never lose its power.
Father God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We ask and pray that these funds will be used to edify and lift your holy name. These and many more blessings we ask your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Right now, Lord God, we come right now asking you, Lord God, to, to bless Pastor Coleman and all the things that he going to do, Lord God, the sickness, Lord God, the, the, the fears that he going to do, Lord God, that we don't know about, Lord God. Strengthen him right now, Lord God. Not just him, Lord God, but we ask a special blessing on his wife, Lord God, on his kids, Lord God. Bless him in a mighty, mighty way, Lord God. Lord God, I come right now, Lord God, asking you the best. All the ministers, the deacons, everybody in the congregation, Lord God. Walk with them, Lord God. Hold their hands, Lord God. Guide them, Lord God, through every day situation, Lord God. Let them know right now, Lord God, that you're right there with them, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you can do it with a small touch, touch, a small whisper, Lord God. It don't have to say much, Lord God, but you know how to encourage every situation, Lord God. And we thank you for it right now, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you know how to, to, to move the circumstances, Lord God, to, to divide the seeds, Lord God, that we may be able to have clear passes, Lord God. And we thank you for it right now, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that we can't even walk without you holding our hands. We can't even talk without you guiding our lips, Lord God. And we thank you for it right now, Lord God. Build us up, Lord God. Continue to build us up, Lord God. For we may be the strong vessel that you have called us to be, Lord God. We just thank you right now, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you praise right now, Lord God. It's in your daughter's son, Jesus, that we pray and give thanks. Amen.
Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased, the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then was the day of the unleavened bread. When he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quantums of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse five, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when, verse 11, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has 
sent an angel and has delivered me, me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. Verse 12, and when he had considered the thing, he became, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. You may be seated. I want to talk today about a praying church is a powerful church. A praying church is a powerful church. And a powerful church is a productive church. And a productive church is a progressive church. And a progressive church is pregnant with unlimited potential. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we should strive to pattern ourselves after the church of the first century era. Why? Because the first century church that added over 3,000 souls to the kingdom of God in one day Although the first century church, they met heavy opposition. They followed mandates of God. Subsequently, God blessed them. Now we must understand a church that does not pray forfeits its blessing to have a witness. And power of the Almighty God. A powerless church does nothing to please or glorify God. Therefore, God is not pleased when his saints fail to collectively pray. Now, if we endeavor to see this church soar this church called Galilee. We expect for it to soar to higher heights. We must become a praying church. Do I have a witness here? If, if we want to see lives change and souls saved, we must become a praying church. If, if, if we want to have an impact on the world, we must become a praying church. Yes, my brothers and sisters, there is real power in a praying church. Do I have a witness here? As the canopy of this text is lifted, we see that Herod Agrippa the first, the grandson of Herod the Great, and the son of Aristobulus, had vexed the church and killed James the brother. Now I want you to notice. The Bible says he vexed certain. Yes, sir. The devil don't bother everybody That's right. in the church. Somebody help me here. Yeah, he, he got his picks and choose. Watch. If he won't hair raised in the church, he know who to fix. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Reverend. He, 
he don't go to anybody uh -huh. and vex them. But he know that those who have the characteristics of hell raiders, he will vex them. Somebody help me here. Yeah, notice because he he, he notice that that he stretched forth his hand to vex serve in the church. I want to stick a pin in that. that certainly, he don't bother anybody, too many people, but there are those that he get the hell raised up. Never over hell. Hell is just this true. Everybody come to church ain't the same. Everybody that carry a suit on, everybody that wear a robe, baby, ain't born again. And, and one thing that the devil does, he starts in the church. Oh, Lord. He wants to tear up. The house. He don't have to go vex everybody. He just vex sir. Somebody help me in here. Yeah. Now, now as, as we look in this text, Peter is arrested. Do I have a witness here? And incarcerated. Herod conjectured that if he killed the head of the church, that Pastor Peter. He would kill the head of the church, the body would soon perish. And don't you know that the mentality still exists today? But unknown to Herod that God has other plans. And I like a God that can turn dead end into detour. Y'all ain't got that yet. He can turn your situation, which seems like a dead end, into a detour. Who can take what looks like the end of the road and turn it into a being? Do I have a witness? That's good, that's good. God is bigger than our prison. God is bigger than our jails, cells, and our chains. Herod, notice, I can get this out of my mind, but Herod appointed 16 God. That's that portrait. Sixteen gods to watch one man. You uh, have a witness. Yes, that this man had to be powerful. Then in the text it said that while Peter was asleep. Watch this. Come here, please. Watch out, you come here. Y'all don't mind what you said right here. Come here, David. He said they sit down. Uh huh. Had 16 men. Come on, sit down. And here, Peter was chained. Yes, sir. <laughs> 16 other men yeah. were watching Peter. Uh huh. And but God came on the scene. Yes, sir. God said, Dave, what happened? Here we go. I'm not going to be long. But watch this. In the middle, while the church at Sister Mary's house, <laughs> they was praying. Yeah. I, I don't know what kind of prayer it was, but I know. it got to. <laughs> For what happened was, all of a sudden, the change faded. Yes, sir. 
Peter kept in prison. It said, but prayer. Prayer was made without ceasing. Do I have a witness? And then the Bible says that same night. Anybody know God the same night? Same night. I believe I got some same night saying. Not tomorrow night. But the same night. Do I have a witness? Peter was sleeping between those two servants. And he came now. Woke Peter. Two chain day. Fell off the arm of Peter. The angel, the Bible says, came to Peter. Isn't it strange? The Bible says that there was a strict sound. All right. In the prison. Yes, sir. It didn't bother nobody. It didn't wake nobody up. Nobody. It didn't scare nobody. Yeah. But you. But later. Somebody help me here. Yeah. And what I'm trying to tell you today, uh, you've had your shining. Uh -huh. when, when trouble was at home. When you were having problems in your home. God shined the light. That's yeah. all right. On you. That's all right. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. He shined the light on Peter. And he smote Peter on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time he raised him up. Yes, sir. Came by. Peter, go quickly. <laughs> and his chain fell off. They just said, look, Peter. I know you're relaxing between these two men, but I don't drop the chains. I want you to put on yourself. Yes, I, I, I want you. And the Bible says Peter did what he told. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness here? Yes, sir. And he said to him, Cast thy garments about thee. Mm -hmm. And then the angel said, Follow me. Uh -huh. Do I have a witness here? When the Bible says they passed the first war. Yeah. After a while, they passed the second war. Uh -huh, brother. But they got to a gate. Yeah. They were given the gate had to be locked, but the gate was unlocked now. Uh -huh. Because God had the key. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. And then I heard when Peter come to himself. Uh -huh. He said, now I know. Now I know. Now I know. Now I, know. I, I, I believe I got some folk in here. Yeah. Have had a situation in your life. God showed up and he showed up. And you can raise your hand and say, now, nah, I know. I, I, I got anybody here that can say, now, I know. Your family was acting up. Your husband and your wife was acting up. But you, God, come to you and now I know. Do I have a witness here? And then he said, sure. In other words, I know it's a sure thing. Do I have a witness? He said, I know that the angel has delivered me. Has God ever delivered you? Somebody ought to shout glory. Has delivered you out of the hands of old hell. Herod has been in all our lives. When you think of everything going on, honky-dory, Herod will show up. 
Do I have a witness here? Sheriff Herod don't care who you are. Herod don't care how much money he got in the bank. But here, Peter said he delivered me out of hand. All of a sudden, he had considered these things. He came. After he left out the gate, he went straight to the prayer meeting. He didn't have no emails. He didn't have Facebook. But the Lord showed him where the prayer meeting was. He showed him where the Lord had come and where it all started. And I heard them at Martha's house. At the house of Mary, the mother of John. I don't know how they prayed. Somebody said, they might have said, now no. Our pastor is in prison. But Lord, would you move in a mighty way? And you know, somebody prayed for you. Somebody help me here. Yeah, somebody, somebody grandmama. Neil might not have had a whole lot of English, but they could say, now nah, no. Nah, no. This is my child. Yeah. I need you right now. Yeah. And I believe I got some folk in here have said, now, nah, Lord, nah, Lord. would you make a way out of no way? Yeah. And I heard after a while, I heard he got to the house of Mary. Do I have here and I heard Peter knocked on the door. He kept on knocking. After a while, they said somebody at the door. And I heard, I, I heard, I, I, I heard, I, I, I heard. He kept on knocking. That was a girl. Her name was Rhoda. She told the people in the house praying that somebody is at the door. I heard. I, I, I heard. I heard Rhoda went to the door. And she said, mm, that sound like Pastor Peter. Do I have a witness here? I, I heard that she heard it after a while and by and by I heard as Peter knocked on the door the dancer came home and named Rhoda and she knew Peter's voice she came to the door and told the group said I believe I hear Pastor Peter's mouth I hear his voice they said, no, he in jail. Do I have a witness here? Now somebody in the house didn't realize the power of prayer because somebody didn't believe that Peter had got his way. But God moved in the jailhouse. God called Peter to come in the house. And they looked at him, the Bible were astonished. To see Peter at the house. Glad that God will make a way. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? God moved in the way. I heard that Peter came on in. And everybody was astonished. But God had moved. Because prayer changes things. And I believe somebody in here today, I 
we'll change that. Oh, yeah. You're going to get it in a minute. Prayer, we'll change that. Oh, yeah. Prayer, that's all right, microphone. I don't.
forget that we come from danger, we come humbly. God has to come now. We know, oh God, what you did for us on Calvary. Yes. You died that we might have life. Yes. We thank you for that Friday. You were battered and bruised, but early Sunday morning you got up thank you. and declared all power in your hands. God, we do this in the remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
remembrance of his broken body, you may now eat the bread. In remembrance of his blood, he shed for the remission of sin, you may not drink, ye all of it. In Jesus' name we give thanks. Church, amen. 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 How many of you were blessed today? I want us to continue to be a powerful church. Yes. And the powerful church comes through prayer. Praying for each other. Amen. 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 Pray for one another. You don't know what people are going through. That's the reason I have to pray. I, I can't call names, but one thing that I do, I just say, Lord, whoever going through this, Lord, bless them, help them, strengthen them, which we, whenever we can. Sometimes we get our prayer list, and sometimes I don't know who's all sick, but I do pray for them. And one thing I learned about prayer, I don't have to be on the scene. I can pray you can be a thousand miles away. Amen. 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 Let the church amen again. Amen. Don't forget. Please don't forget. Oh, one other thing. I, 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 every Sunday I forget it, but Sister Helen started her class. Amen. amen. In Sunday school. Amen. Let's get to tell her. Amen. Well, I keep forgetting. Come out and come out and march in the pulpit every Sunday. And I said, I'm gonna mention it, but I I keep forgetting. But thank God that Sister Helen has started her class, but uh, Matthew started his. Amen? Amen. We thank God for all of you. Uh, don't forget on Tuesday at Bear Hollow Cemetery, uh, the mother of Brother Stephen Cartier, mother will be funeralized. Fine. She was a member of Galilee. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements? Don't forget, uh, those of you who want to go, uh, oh, let me say this, Pastor, yesterday went, I mean Friday, went and uh, we got a, about, a, about nine of our church members gave them communion. We started our communion services back. Amen. We did. Sister Colton called and got permission. I don't want to come and surprise nobody. Because you may not want me there. Amen. 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 Some people not sick don't feel comfortable right now. And I don't want to walk into a situation where you don't feel comfortable. Amen. Uh, Sister Colton called and we got, and today, we are going to see our brother and sister Pearson, also see Sister Marshall, and uh, my brother is going to get Reverend Nash and uh, my sister out in Terrence City. He's going to get them, and who is Brother Matthew is going to get Sister Pauline and Sister Mason. Sister Wanda, thank you. And if there's anyone you think you need to know, get community. See Brother Chairman, and he will get it. Uh, if we can't get it today, if we miss someone, listen, I want you to understand, communion is just not for first Sunday. That's right, that's right. Amen. I want people, I know a lot of our people are right there about, but if all who we don't get this, if, if we can, we'll get you next Sunday. Amen. Or oh, I'll come and see you during the week. But I want you to know that circumvent is just not for first Sunday. He said do it often as you can. But when you do it, you do it in the remembrance, he said, of me. Amen. May God bless you. And may God kiss you. Keep you. Any other announcements? God. Parade, parade, parade. Parade, We're going to leave here right after church. Parade. Those who want to parade, we're going to invite Sister Stroud, our oldest member. She's 97. Amen. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. My Lord, we went back there the other day because I got nobody to get my cake. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, she, she, she getting around this spry, doing just as good 
And I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. God has smiled on me. Amen. Oh.